In order for us to play effective blues, the first thing we need to understand is the setup of the blues, which is what we refer to as the 12 bar blues. Now there's, what 12 bar blues means is 12 measures, okay? There's lots of different kinds of blues. You can play an eight bar blues and a 12, 24 bar blues and different things like that. But what we wanna focus on right now is the standard setup of the 12 bar or 12 measure blues, okay? Now blues, the, the blues we're gonna deal with right now is gonna be dealing with major chords. And we're gonna be dealing with what we refer to as the one, the four, and the five chords uh, that we use in blues. So for instance, let's just make this really easy because I'm not gonna go into a, a great detail of, about theory about this, but if you were to count up on your hand and you were thinking you were in the key of A, your first chord in the key of A would be A. Your second chord would be B, C, D, and E. So the first chord is A, the fourth chord is D, the fifth chord is E, okay? Now that doesn't work perfectly if you've ever studied uh, music theory, uh, you know, the, the, there's sharps and flats and things like that. I just want you to understand that blues is based off the first, the fourth, and the fifth chords in any key that we're gonna be in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by looking at the key of A. We're gonna look at A, D, and E, okay? So let's do this. We're gonna head over to our guitar and we're gonna make ourselves an A chord, and a D chord, and an E chord. Now you've probably heard those chords a million times used together and they don't sound very bluesy at this point. If I'm going... It doesn't really sound like blues. So there's a few things we need to do to this chord progression and this rhythm to make it authentically sounding like blues. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna convert these three chords that I'm playing right now into bar chords. Okay, that's the first step. So we're gonna take this A chord, and we're gonna move it up here to the fifth fret of the sixth string, and we're gonna play an A major bar chord. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move down to the uh, D bar chord on the fifth string, we're gonna play a D major bar chord. And then we're gonna play an E major bar chord right here. Okay, now you could do this anywhere. I just, for our situation, I want you to follow me. Okay, so we have A, D, and E. Okay, so now let's go back to this 12 bar or 12 measure thing I was just talking about. We're gonna break this 12 bar blues or 12 measure blues into three segments that we can memorize. Okay, and we're gonna be using the one, the four, and the five chords to do it. So the first four measures the second four measures, and then the last four equals, of course, 12 measures. The first four measures are gonna be a one chord. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this A chord, and for four straight measures, we're gonna play this A chord. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. Okay, now don't worry about rhythm or anything, let's just get the 12 bar set up. So for four measures, we're playing the A chord. Then we're gonna to move to the middle four measures, which is gonna be the four chord for two measures and then the one chord for two measures, which means we're gonna to go to the D chord for two measures and then back to the A chord for two measures. So we're gonna go D, then back to A. Now we're on the last four measures, okay? And for now, we're gonna call those last four measures the turnaround, which is telling everybody, the, all the, the band members and everybody that we're gonna be starting all over after this four measures. So in the end here, these last four measures, we're gonna play a five chord for a measure, a four chord for a measure, and then a one chord for a measure, and then we're gonna turn around to the five chord again for the last measure. So it's gonna go five, four, one, five. Now again, I'm playing E, D, A, E, but remember I'm calling them five, and four and one, because I'm thinking of it as being in the key of A, I'm using the first chord, the fourth chord, and the fifth chord. And the reason we're doing that is because as soon as we get done with this, we're gonna start moving this to some other keys and you're gonna see how easy this is. Okay, so one, four, five, right? We're on the five chord, we're on the last four measures, which is the turnaround. So we're going five, So what I need you to do is I need you to memorize that 12 measure sequence. Now it can be edited and different things as we keep going or as you keep learning, but let's start with just having it be one, 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 four, four, one, one, and then five, four, one, five. So if you were plugging in the chords A for one, 
D for 4 and E for 5, you'd be playing A, 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 D, D, A, A, and then your turnaround, which is E, D, A, E. So let's play this together, okay? So grab your guitar and let's play this. So here we go. One, just any strum will do, okay? We'll, we'll get to all of that later, but right now let's just, let's just play that 12 measure sequence, okay? Hopefully you've got this written down or in front of you. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. One. Now we're going to go to the four chord. Here we go. For two measures, and back to the five, or the one chord. Here we go. Now we go to the five chord. Four, one, five. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing, but I'm going to refer to the chords as A, D, and E. Here we go. On A. One, two, ready, go. A. Okay, so the first thing for you to do is to memorize that movement from A to D to E, that 12 measure sequence, okay? Now, why am I referring to these as 1, 4, 5 as opposed to just saying A, D, and E? Well, here's why, and this is what's super cool about this, okay? Once we've memorized that 12 measure sequence, okay, A, D, and E, or 1, 4, 5, however you're doing it, if we think of it as 1, 4, 5, what we can do is watch this. We could move down two frets to the key of G. We could move down to G here. And if we are in the key of G, the 1, 4, 5 is G, A, B, C, and D. G, C, and D. Well, what's cool about the guitar is the 1, the G chord, is right here. Well, the 4 chord, or the C chord, is right underneath it, and the 5 chord is two frets higher. So what you're going to notice is that the A, D, and E, or 1, 4, or, and 5, is the exact same shape, visually, as moving down two frets and playing 1, 4, 5. Now what's cool about that is, you could play the 12 bar in any key. You could play the 12 bar blues in keys you don't even know, right? Let's say you don't even know the, the chords for the key of A flat, right? Well, if you knew that A flat was on the fourth fret of the sixth string, you could make a bar for, chord there, A flat, and your four chord, regardless of the name of it, is right there, and your five chord is a whole step higher. Okay? So, again, I'm not saying you shouldn't learn the names of those, but what I'm saying is as long as you understand that, that one four five progression in your head, the 12 bar blues I should say, and you understand that this shape that you're making on the guitar, one, four, five, no matter where you go, one, four, five, it always looks the same. As long as you can think about that 12 bar blues sequence, you could play the 12 bar blues in any key. So let's play the, the 12 bar blues in the key of F sharp, for instance. We're gonna go to the second fret, we're gonna do exactly the same thing we just did in A. I'm gonna yell out one, four, and five chords, okay? Here we go, one, two, ready, go. Okay, so the point of the one four five is that you could, if, if you don't lock yourself in the key of A or the key of G or something, you can think about that 12 measure sequence as ones and fours and fives, and you just put this in whatever key you're gonna be in. So if you wanna be in the key of B, go to the seventh fret and play what we just did. If you wanna be in the key of F, you go to the first fret and play what we just did. If you wanna be in the key of G, you go to the third fret. Now it does require you, of course, to know the notes on your sixth string to be able to find the right place to start, correct? Um, but it's just really, really effective. So that's the first step in learning how to play 12 bar blues is instead of playing them as open chords, just for simplicity, move them into bar chord shapes. Memorize the one, four, five. Okay. And then memorize the 12 bar blues and play it in whatever key you'd like.